your Lego Ideas project that got 10,000 votes, which is not an easy thing to do. So big congratulations on that. That's always an impressive achievement. Thank you so much. It was it was like I I I had dreamed of like having an idea for Lego Ideas that that I felt really passionate about and would hope to get there. And the cyber drug just kind of ended up coming out of the blue. I needed something to build for a 24 hour stream I was doing. And it was like a week after the announcement of the cyber truck. And I was like, you know what? YOLO, let's like see if we can come up with a cyber truck build in a single 24 hour stream. And lo and behold, we managed to come up with the build. I got the ideas project submitted the next day because I knew timing would be important. Um, and then the support just started flooding in and I, 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 I still have a hard time believing that it, it actually happened. Um, and so I think the review is going to start for May in, for this one. So it'll be really exciting to hopefully hear some more within the next few months. I do have a request. Can you please show that track closer to the camera? Can you please I guess I, I mean, it's, it's so, Mike, Come it's on. so far. I mean, I have to like take like three Bring steps. It over. <laughs> I've been eyeing this ever since we started. But oh I do have goodness. it right Look here. Uh, I don't think I got this door to close properly. I'm not going to lie. Lego has a lot of work to do if they do decide to go ahead with this because some of the elements of this, guys, I was not able to figure out. I'm not a Lego designer. I'm a fan designer and I definitely use my fan related techniques. <laughs> But I do have, uh, I think, some cool functions on there. We obviously got the hood in there, so you can store your stuff in the front. Uh, I've got a removable to no cover. I wish they made a larger garage door piece because maybe something could have worked with that. And then the best solution I had come up with for how to emulate the function of the fold out ramp uh, for the thing was to have it kind of fold out like so. Ooh. And then this is removable when the ATV is in there. So I I'm sure Lego will be able to get a little bit more creative than I do. Uh, but I, I still managed to work in some cool things. I have like a little under bed, you know, storage compartment. Uh, the wheels, of course, spin. And I definitely think this would be a very suitable model for uh, releasing it as a static model, but having the option for it to be upgraded with some power up or power functions or whatever Lego's current system is for powering stuff. Um, and obviously, it'll be very fitting an electric vehicle. Lego system is electric. So it would definitely be really, really cool for, for that to be the case. What's the most illegal aspect of that build? <laughs> I think the doors, the way the doors work is really like sketchy. Uh, I mean, it, it's all legal building techniques, but the way they like interfere with each other is totally like incorrect. Like you can see, like I can't just smoothly close the door because it collides. Right. And then the middle door, like the front door has to be open for the back door to open. Uh, and that's on some really janky connections there. I think it's like just a clip attached to a bar that I managed to wedge in there. So well, I, I did what I needed to to kind of make it work so at least you could get an idea and then hopefully Lego should, you know, things happen with it. Yeah. Uh, well, luckily, that's not your responsibility to figure out if that becomes an actual set. So. Yeah, that's their problem. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I think like because the Cybertruck keeps evolving, like Elon is adding features to it or changing the shaping. And I think they have even like that one picture when it looks like a, like a camper van. It has a tent in the back. I think you should have it as a module in the final set. If, if it gets, I, I really hope like uh, this is the, the, the idea, the project that will start actually make Lego pick up the Tesla license. I think Elon actually is a Lego fan. <laughs> so oh, I would be amazing. He would be. He's a super nerdy, cool guy yeah. being a billionaire on top of all that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it would be amazing to, 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 for this to spark the, you know, the flame in Elon to actually get a Lego license. I think that would yeah, be amazing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Stuart Harris in the chat says it needs a uh, broken window oh. print. Uh, you know what? He's not the only one. I'm sure you guys can imagine. I've heard that one uh, a couple of <laughs> times here and there. Um, I will throw out there, though, Lego, most of their vehicle sets do not have side windows. So I'm kind of embodying the Lego spirit or the Lego creator expert spirit. Because uh, if you look at the Fiat, if you look at the Mustang, I'm pretty sure almost none of those, especially the front, the passenger doors, do not have side mirrors or side windows. Um and then I would also just throw that out there. I don't know how you would integrate a window in this yeah. unangled area. <laughs> special if you can this. figure it out, I will gladly throw a sticker on oh, it. Oh, look who is it. <laughs> but until such time, until such time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but like you said, that's what they pay the, the big kroner over in Denmark to the designers. Exactly. <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> How quick did that support come in? Because if I remember correctly, it seems like it was very quickly that the the it, it was forty eight days total, which is actually the exact same amount of days that the uh, ship in a bottle took to get ten thousand supporters. So kind of cool that uh, me and Jake had the same amount of time for our projects. 
And let's hope they both end up the same as the sets. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. What what were uh, what were some of the hardest uh, parts for you to achieve with this build as you were working on that? Because I know there's not a lot of rounded shapes, but there are some angles in there and things yeah. that are easy to capture. It was definitely some of those angles, especially like the front angle where the headlights are, because it has that like beam headlight that that kind of uh, cuts and angles. Um, I man, I must have gone through like seven or eight iterations of that. I was honestly extremely close to giving up on the project midway. I think especially during like when you're doing a 24 hour live stream, that's exhausting enough as it is. And to have to, you know, face these complex challenges in the build as well, really was not a great combination. Um, so I was very, very close to giving up on it. Uh, but I ended up just picking out some other parts to work on, came back to it, managed to make it work. Uh, so I was very, very pleased and very lucky that I, that I managed to figure it out. You're winning the Pooh project that I believe is still out there. It is still out there. Yeah. Vote on. So you've also got this active project that people yeah. can, can still vote on this as well. Mm -hmm. So what have you learned kind of in these processes or any, in, any tips you might give to other people? Yeah, I would definitely say um, finding a project that you're passionate about goes a long way. I think like as much as I love the Winnie the Pooh and Tigger build, and you know, I grew up watching Winnie the Pooh. I definitely loved it, but I'm not like some, you know, crazed fan. Like, like I would say I might be about Tesla. Um, and I definitely think when you work on a project that you're really passionate about and really invested in, people can definitely see it and feel it in the build. And I think that helps translate to people supporting the project. Um, so I would definitely recommend finding something that you're really enthusiastic about when it comes to what you're building and putting up as a project. Um, and then, you know, simple things, presentation obviously goes a long way. So make sure you take some nice clean photos. Uh, if you need to work with rendering, there's no problem with that. The rendering software these days out there you know, whether it's with Studio or Mechabricks um, are, are really, really great for allowing you to, you know, go beyond what you might be able to with your physical collection. Uh, most of the pictures for Winnie the Pooh and Tigger are real, but the last one that's showing right now actually is, uh, is a render because I didn't have the parts to properly show how I wanted some of the elements on the back of the bills. Um, so yeah, just making use of, of what you have available to you, but making sure your pictures are clean, simple. Uh, and then I think like just finding little elements that make you unique. Uh, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, I think, is something a lot of people have built, but I don't know if a lot of people had built Tigger in a way that he could actually balance and be bouncing on his tail, per se. Um, so I think that's kind of something that helped draw in some attention to the project, is just having a unique element to it. With the Cybertruck, I wanted to make sure it had a lot of functions, and I added a lot throughout the project's history as well. So in a sense, even maybe creating incentive for people to support so they could see what you might come up with. Because I think I did like four, three or four goals throughout the course of the Cybertruck project, where it was like, if we get 2,500 supporters, I'll add opening doors. At 5,000, I'll do the ATV. At 7,500, I added in the Elon Musk minifigures. So uh, just finding different ways to continue to incentivize people to support the project and share it uh, can definitely go a long way too. You put two things on Lego Ideas and one of them got 10,000. So when you're creating the Cybertruck or Winnie the Pooh, when are you satisfied with what you've built and are comfortable putting it on ideas because it doesn't need to be like the complete model what you th what like what it might be as a product yeah. i feel like it can be like the gist and you can mm -hmm. post it up there so like when are you satisfied with the build that you can put it on there so the these two builds i would definitely say i treated very differently winnie the pooh uh kind of came together very slowly over a long period of time i built tigger uh like i think in the middle of of last year oh no actually the middle of 2018 sorry uh people had really loved the tigger and then it ended up being actually at Brickworld in Chicago that Tigger won an award. It was my first Brickworld award I'd been attending for seven years. And I was like, man, people really, really love this Tigger. Uh, maybe this is a sign that I should invest a little bit more into this project and turn it into my first ideas project. Because, you know, I think these are iconic characters and a lot of people would have a lot of fun building them. So I spent a, a couple of weeks working on Winnie the Pooh, the scenery. And then, you know, I worked on building my, you know, kind of presentation for it, the description and everything like that. So the Winnie the Pooh and Tigger project actually came together over quite a while. Um, whereas the Cybertruck, I literally spent a day after the, like I did my 24 hour live stream, went to sleep. I think I had work the next day. So I went to work and then I came home. And for the rest of that day, I was just all in on getting that Cybertruck project up. And that's because the timing was so important. Uh, right. the, the announcement had just happened uh, like a week before. And I was like, if I can get this in really quickly after this big announcement, and, and there was still lots of interest and discussion online about the Cybertruck, um, I, I knew timing was going to be important. So admittedly, I kind of threw a lot of caution out the window, and I just tried to do the best that I could with the 
very limited time I had to get it up there as quickly as possible.